Warning, this video contains possessive thoughts and manipulation. She cried in my arms as I stood there, frozen. Yin, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. She sobbed, and she pulled away. He didn't harm you in any way, right? Her voice broke, and she frantically looked around my body for any signs of harm. No, I stuttered. Oh, oh, thank God. She sighed with a relief. She then looked me dead in the eyes. You, you need to leave. He's going to arrive soon. She panicked as she started pushing my body towards what seemed to be the front door. I didn't know what to do. It was all happening too fast, but I let her push me towards the door. Leave now, she whispered. I stared at her for a moment. N I was cut off by her. Please, he's going to arrive soon, she begged. Her bo my bottom lip quivered. I don't know why my heart felt heavy. She helped me. She's the one who got... Oh, she helped him. She's the one who got me into this mess. She... I was just about to leave when I looked back. She's the same as me. A victim of his scheme. As soon as I ran away from her, I ran. Ran away from the house. That my heart was beating out of my chest as my legs trembled from the acceleration. None of that mattered. None of the pain I was feeling mattered. All I needed to do was... Yurichi... I needed to find him. Maybe he can help me. Where did he live again? I stopped in my tracks. I was left with going left, right, or straight ahead. I didn't dare take any turns. Left and right seemed unfamiliar. All I was left with now was going straight ahead. As soon as I arrived near a park, where? Where do I go now? Should I head inside the park? Fuck, maybe I should go... I headed towards the park. From afar, I see familiar houses. Wait, no. They don't look familiar. Fuck. I, s I soon headed to the opposite direction and stumbled upon a school. It's pretty far. I can't get a clear view, but I think it's an elementary school. I was about to turn around and go the other way, but someone shouted, Onichan! A loud, familiar voice shouted, I, rise and I raised an eyebrow and turned around to see Rui. The elementary school? His Rui school? I could have seen a hundred students leaving by the gate as Rui ran up to me. Honey, Jen, are you here? He excitedly asked as he looked up at me. You look dirty, he commented. I, uh, it, um, I, something happened. I let out an awkward laugh as he raised an eyebrow. Anyway, I was heading somewhere. I didn't mean to go here. I'll just... I was cut off by Rui holding my hand to stop me. Why is he... Oh, are you leaving already? He asked as his face turned into a pout. Oh, I just have um, somewhere to go. I told him, trying to pry, gently pry him off. I need to go to Blake or, or Yurichi. Can I take you there with my car? Rui replied nonchalantly, Right, Rui's car, but I'll have to eject that offer. But thank you, Rui. I replied gently, removing his hand from mine. He stopped yet again. No, I, um, you're dirty. I can give you some new clothes and a ride to go wherever you want. Rui sounded so desperate when he said that. Huh. Will he get off my back if I just follow along for now? All right, I replied. His face lit up. Wait, wait here. I'm going to call my driver, he told me as he ran up to his driver just a few feet away from me. Second person POV. Young master, we cut off the driver. Yes, I know that I need to go home, but we should take my sister with us, he told the driver. He then leaned and whispered something to the driver. Call mother. Tell her to bring big brother and go to the shrine. Make sure that whoever is there is gone. I don't care if they're killed or pushed aside inside, he whispered. The driver quickly shook his head and pulled out his phone. Really soon turned to you. Nichen, come here, he told you. He watched as you hesitantly walked towards him. Rui already knew why you looked so anxious. You were planning on finding Blake, but finding Blake meant escaping, and escaping means that.
you wouldn't be with him. Wouldn't be there to hug him, tutor him, teach him, watch movies with him, play games with him, eat food with him, or do anything with him. And he hated that. He can't. He doesn't care if his workers call him a selfish and idled brat for doing this. As long as you, his only chan, is there by his side, the driver soon put his phone away and walked towards the parked, luxurious car. Rui opened the door and motioned for you to come in. You were still a little hesitant, but soon came in. We should go back to my house first. Get you all cleaned. You're all dirty, like you fell down a forest or something. He commented. To which you just let out an awkward laugh. The ride was filled with him talking and you just listening. He mostly talked about his day and his school lessons. You all soon arrived and the driver opened the door for you. You got out of the car and not even a second later, Rui was already by your side. He clung to your arm. Should we go inside? He asked. Yeah, but Rui, I'll only be here for a while. You informed him. To which he just mum hummed and brushed it off. The two of you walked towards the large, luxurious door of his mansion. You already been here before, but you couldn't. You could never get over how beautiful the architecture is. It was similar to a mansionous in the Asia villainous novel or Manhaus. You used to read in the real world. As soon as the two of you were inside, a maid welcomed the two of you. Good afternoon, young master and Miss Yin. She bowed. Can you get a bath ready and some of my big sister's garments that she'll be borrowing? Rui told her. The maid only nodded her head and soon left. Rui, is your is your sister okay with that? Me borrowing her clothes, I mean. You ask. He only shrugged. She's never home, anyways. He replied. You looked around the mansion as he led you to the living room. After taking a bath, I'll just leave and look for Blake again. He's probably still waiting for me. You thought. You let out a small sigh as you glanced at Rui. Although you were desperate to leave, the the thought of leaving Rui was also made you feel guilty. Like how would he react? How will he handle it when you're gone? Knowing him, he'd probably throw a tantrum. You sat down on the sofa while he sat next to you. You noticed a maid walk up to the two of you with a tray. She set the set down two cups of orange juice and some snacks. Ah, uh, thank you. You thanked her as she only bowed and left. You stared at the aforementioned of snacks, macaroons, and biscuits. You weren't really sure if you were in the mood to eat after what you had witnessed earlier this morning. You should try these macaroons. Our baker just baked them this morning. Rui commented as he handed you a macaroon. You grabbed it and took a small bite while he got a macaroon and ate it as well. Time was ticking, and you hoped you would be able to leave soon. Time skip. You wore the clothes that the maid had given you. It was a white nightgown. You weren't even planning on sleeping here for the night, so you just assumed that it was the only available clothing for you. You looked out the window from the bathroom. It was raining. Maybe you could ask Rui to let you borrow an umbrella or something. You let out a soft sigh as you were ready to leave and say goodbye to Rui. You left the bathroom and met him in the hallway. Nichan, you're finally done. Come on, I got a movie we can watch in my bedroom. He told you. He was wearing his spider-themed pajamas. He looked pretty excited too. Ah, Rui, I don't think I can stay much longer. I really need to go. Is there an umbrella? I. You were cut off by Rui. Why are you leaving already? Besides, it's raining, Onichan. You get sick. He asked. You shook your head. It's fine. I'll manage. I just really need to. You were cut off again by Rahim. Really? Need to what? Go? Leave me? We haven't even met up nor hung out in so long, and now you're so desperate to get rid of me. He replied. No, Rui. It's just that I need to go. I have to meet Blake. He's waiting for me. He replied as you walked closer to him, placing your hands on his shoulder to soothe him, so that he wouldn't throw a tantrum. Can't it wait till tomorrow? He shouted. Your eyes widened as you flinched. I just want to spend time with you today. Can't you just sleep over for tonight? His voice broke for the la in the last word. Rui, I'm so sorry. I really need to. He grabbed your wrist. No, don't. 
go, please? Can't you just stay for an hour or two? You stare at him, not knowing what to say. Besides, it's raining. Are you really risking your health just to go to Blake? He asked. I, yes. You replied as you looked down. His eyes whined as his lips trembled. He looked disappointed. I'm, I'm so sorry. You stuttered as you walked past him. He stood there as if processing the whole thing. You headed to the front door and noticed a black umbrella on the side and grabbed it and opened the door. Fuck, it sure is raining heavily tonight, he mumbled as you opened the umbrella and started walking towards the gate that was 20 feet away. It didn't take long before you heard Rui. No, he shouted. You looked behind you to see him running towards you. Rui, you'll get sick. You rushed to his side to make sure he got covered in the covered in the rain because you had an umbrella he clung to your clothes no don't leave please please just stay with me oni chan you looked at him with tears rolling down his cheeks as he let out small snivels Rui, you were cut off by him hugging onto your body no 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 i don't want to hear it you're staying with me don't go don't leave he shouted his knuckles trembling as his grip on your nightgown was tight. You grabbed one of his hands as you tried removing his hands from you. Rui, please. We can just hang out tomorrow, okay? He cut you off once again. Liar! 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 He shouted as he sobbed. You bit your bottom lip of frustration. You really needed to go now. You needed to look for Blake. Knowing him, he must still be waiting for you or looking for you. Rui, let go. I need to go. You replied. He didn't say a single thing and just hugged you tighter. Your mind was scrambling with ideas as to how you could get him off of you. You then had an idea that you chose to do with a whim. You let go of the umbrella and pushed him off you. His eyes whined as he fell to the ground, but first, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to harshly push you. It's just, I need to go, okay, Rui? I need to leave. We can hang out tomorrow, and, and, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Goodbye. You told him as you turned around and started walking towards the gate. <laughs> Honey, Jen hates me. You're leaving me. He cried out. You glared at him. He's just a kid. A clit. A kid clinging on an ounce of familiar affection. Familiar love. He truly loved you like an older sister. And seeing this serenity, it made your heart ache. Maybe along the way, you knew to, you grew to really love and care for him like an older sister would. In a way, he reminded you of your younger self, but, one, but you needed to leave. You turned again and continued to walk as you heard Rui's cries even throughout the heavy rain. Honey Chen! Honey Chen! Don't, don't leave! He cried out as you continued so, as he continued sobbing loudly. You bit your bottom lip again out of frustration. You felt conflicted. Should you really leave, Rui? You glanced at him and then glanced at the gate. You had to choose, Rui or Blake and your family. Fuck! You mumbled as your mind tried to decide. You looked at Rui and then again at the gate. If you leave now, then fuck, fuck, fuck. God damn it, Blake. I'm sorry. Please leave without me. You mumbled as you inhaled and exhaled. You turned to Rui and ran up to him. You hugged him tight. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm not leaving anymore, okay? I'm not leaving. I'm right here. You told him as you comforted him. He wrapped his arms around you as he continued to sob. Shh. It's okay. I'm sorry. Forgive me, okay, Rui? I didn't mean to push you. I won't leave you now, okay? I'll be by your side, Rui. You reassured him. Maids? Anyone? You called out to his staff. After five minutes, a maid ran with an umbrella and a towel. You decided to choose to stay. To stay with Rui. Time skip. He's still not awake. But is it possible for you you could cook some leek soup? You asked him, maid. He's still hot, mostly like a fever because of last night. You added as you sighed. The maid nodded and soon left. You looked at Rui, who was on his bed. 
his face red and his temperature hot. He got a fever because of last night. He got drenched in the rain. He soon noticed his eyes open. You shouldn't stand up so soon. Just lie down, okay? He told him. He nodded and laid back down. I'll go call the maid. I'll just go and buy some medicine for you. You stopped midway as he held your hand. No, don't leave. Just tell the maid, he mumbled. You paused for a moment before replying. All right, you replied as you sat on the bed, oh, on the chair next to his bed. You let out a small sigh as you were never seeing your family, and you didn't even know anything about the whereabouts of Blake, and you prayed to God that he was safe and back in the real world. On the other hand, you don't think you'd be able to leave, especially with Rui in the picture. He's just a kid, and you felt guilty for leaving him behind. You thought that maybe he could come to you, but what if he couldn't? You'd have to leave him behind either way, so you chose this. This was your decision. You chose to stay with Rui, making a big sacrifice, fitting for a big sister. And you guys thought I left this series behind. I didn't. Tee hee. But anyways, next week will continue because I'm doing these on the weekend since they're out. But next week, have fun with Muzan.